minutes to hear me time and speak. You must be. It's something wrong with you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right then. Let me share this link. Simon, I'm going to start with. Uh, how have you been this week? And then we're going to jump back to beforehand because we're a week after Dragon's Back. How are you feeling, mate? Yeah. Um, so my Dragon's Back finished last Friday. So um, yeah, to pull out with my shin. Um, I, I picked up a nice injury. Um, uh, my week has been yeah, I haven't been too bad really. I haven't been that down. Um, done everything I could in the end. So. Um, yeah, that's, it's just uh, the nature of the beast at the end of the day, isn't it? When you're running more than 200 miles in a week, shit, shit can go wrong. <laughs> um, so things are expected. But not this week. You know, um, I'm injured now, so I've done absolutely no exercise at all. Drunk some beers, eaten some cakes. I've um, yeah, I've been been living the dream actually. Um, I was gonna, I was planning on having a nice rest after Dragon's back. Anyway, I've had a pretty flat out year or two so uh yeah, yeah. it was, was called called for a, a nice rest after this one anyway but now it's forced so uh yeah <laughs> it's quite nice isn't it really whether however the race went it's quite nice just to have a week or two chilling at least yeah yeah um i, I imagine it's going to be definitely be another week and could be another week after that um i'm back for x-rays next week so we'll actually see what we've got because it's a suspected um a stress fracture but the nurse says they take weeks to actually develop into a stress fracture because mine's quite high up on the shin so it's, it's higher yeah. than all the tendons and everything so um yeah but we'll actually see what we got then yeah yeah, yeah well what about, what about what about you you're you're limping around as well <laughs> on crutches yeah similar injuries that's just what happens when you're kind of such high level athletes on living on the edge <laughs> 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 it's uh it's just a typical injury mine is yeah i just picked up severe tendonitis on the same day that you did luckily mine was more gradual a gradual grind to a stop that made it i was so far into day five that there's no point in turning around slightly yeah. different situation to you so you'll stop your dead I, in your tracks. i was i was not far from the end of on day five I got down yeah. cribbing, so I had all I had to do was fan a big, and then that, yeah. and then you got that nice bit of flat running on the, along the ridge, and then it's just one d- big descent down into uh, into ta- into Talabond. But yeah, no, that descent on cribbing, that's where I like, couldn't move then, so that's what I gave in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, let's rewind again a little bit. Give us like how did training go into going into lead up to the dragons back because i was lucky enough to join you on a few runs um yeah like we what did we do one day in snowdonia that was easy enough then we did uh sea round and we did Brecon beacons from what yeah. i could see you were fresh fit raring to go motivated but how did the training go in the leading up to it in the months leading up to it yeah um i I couldn't have done anything more, really. It was one of the best training blocks I've done. Um, I was really, really pushing myself on the hard sessions. I was going really, really light on the on the uh, recovery days. Um, I was doing everything by the book to the T. Um, so my, the running, you know, my hill reps, so smash street smashing them, making sure I was going hard on them. I was really, really comfortable going uphill and, and downhill as well. I was. I also put in quite a few downhill sessions it was just the first time i've ever done that in a, in a block so going really really hard on downhills and causing damage so getting getting used to that um yeah but yeah i got through everything uh, injury free um strength work was a bit different for me this year normally i'm in the gym squats and deadlifts you know the the, the old school stuff but this time i was just doing a little plyometrics so uh it was a you know, box jumping stuff, but on my steps in my garden. That's what I use. Um, yeah. So that was that was, that was me, my main strength work going into this, and I, I like to do all the plyometrics because you don't get the heavy muscles then, the, the DOMS and whatnot. You you're fresh all the time. Yeah. So I like doing that. Um, 
But now um, I had to pull out with this injury where I did ne- neglect where my shins and my ankle flexibility. That's something I usually do a lot of. And um, because I've had problems, you know, tendonitis and whatnot yeah. in, over the years. So I've always had a really, really good routine for the shins just to make the bulletproof. And yeah, something I did neglect in the lead up to this. I didn't do any of my shin work. You know, I used to do loads of band work, you know, um, lots of resistance yeah. in both directions. Um, I would do calf raises with weights with a barbell. Um, so yeah, didn't do actually any of that, um, which, yeah, kind of regret not doing that. It's hard because it, when you start doing those for so consistently for so long, they then become. Then it's not an effort to do it, is it? It's not. They're not. Yeah, difficult. you it's, kind of think. You think, oh, the pro- oh, I don't need to do it now because I've had. I haven't had a problem in such a long time. So right, you know that. Mm. Yeah, something I will uh, get back into my plan now. I was very similar. Like it was. Like I'm. I'm a big advocate for the strength training as well. They were similar routine to you, but couple of months out I hurt my back and then I was too scared to pick up a weight then because yeah I couldn't afford couldn't afford to have two or three it wasn't serious but it was two or three weeks where it was just just running easy couldn't push anything because of this back issue if that had happened again in the meat like the meaty bit you're training it's just it's a nightmare yeah. so you, I did you, you I signed up it. really really late as well didn't you yeah, about nine weeks out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's very late compared to everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know yourself, it's not... That wasn't so much a worry, really, about getting no. down or anything. It's just how much you want to put into the event, I guess. Yeah. Again, in hindsight, I'd have loved to have had more specific training. But my block was really good as well. Like, I felt good on the runs. Did do specific ones. I mean, one run happened to be with you because it was, <laughs> absolutely burned me off on going up in a van. Yeah, I was waiting at the top for you, just taking photos of you coming up. But uh, I kept thinking you were coming up, but it wasn't. It was other people. I was well, thinking, oh, he's, yeah, he's hiking, he's hiking, he's must have overtaken Gary. <laughs> I just, yeah, I felt good until you, you know, when you don't, and it got, and it was a hot yeah, day every year. It was a hot day, and yeah, then, it was. Yeah, I remember. The and end, I was like. Food. I was in the stream at the bottom, like filling the water, thinking, right, we have a nice high cut now. And then Simon starts burning off up, up the path, running off easy. <laughs> right, so that's the difference then. I'm not, I couldn't run up that that day. Like, <laughs> and then I just, yeah, I couldn't get it back. But it was good because I, I went into that, I went into the Dragon's Back thinking, yeah, fit and well, and that's all you can kind of hope for. Whereas, I guess it's a bit of the unknown for you because you were going in as defending champion. You know you're fit. You know you're capable of the times that you were the last year before. We had a chat beforehand, and I'll be honest, we didn't really know where the challenge was going to come from. Yeah, it was no, exciting. No, there was a challenge. Not, not in terms of the competition at the other races. No, no. It didn't. They were they were all unknowns. So uh, yeah, yeah. So give us. So we're up to, I guess, because we don't want to spend all night, but. Training went well, didn't it? For you and for me, I think. In hindsight, it's great to say that we could have done this or that, but I felt good on the start line. That you did feel good on yeah, the start line. I, I felt I was physically good on the start line, but um, I think the pressure, pressure got to me a bit, and that's what yeah affected my running then. So I, I couldn't get settled, and I was feeling really uncomfortable in the, in the race for those first those first couple of days. Um, yeah, you know, big goals on my shoulder. So, yeah, yeah it was kind of weighing me down, kind of stopped the enjoyment a bit. It, yeah, I, I didn't didn't enjoy days one or two at all. I wasn't happy. So, um, yeah, but then as things gradually, gradually got into the week, then pressure kind of started easing a bit and I started getting a bit settled. And that's when I started running well then, day four especially. That's when I was, I was in the zone then. I liked it in because Simon's written a good blog and I'll put it in. You'll see it in the comments after. In the blog, it mentioned like the night before. It's like, <laughs> it's going to sound like a married couple, but we spent the day together <laughs> mainly, didn't we, at registration? Yeah. 
it's quite relaxing but i'm a bit like you as soon as you do your stuff you want to get to the hotel and actually when i got to the hotel still had some stuff to do but it's that period when you're kind of on your own in the hotel room and you can't really mess around with the kit anymore that's all packed away and it's like and that part just tell me about that bit because that's the first time i thought yeah you said you're basically pacing in your undies yeah um <laughs> I, I'm always like it before any race. I, I, I can't sleep the night before. Um, yeah. It's just constantly going over the little, the little issues that could happen. Um, you know, little problems. I've forgotten little bits and pieces of kit, um, this and that. Um, and they just, just overtake you. Just take over your mind, for, the, for my mind anyway, for that evening. And then it's like, before you know it, you look at the clock and it's like fucking three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's like, shit, I best, best get some sleep. <laughs> but no, I, it's, always, it's always the same for me. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't sleep like four races. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't enjoy it. Did you feel, like from what sleep you did get, did you feel ready to go on that start line or were you... Yeah, it, no, or? yeah, I was, I was ready. I was physically there on the start line. Um, I was up for it. Um, don't rub it yeah. in just because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you 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 just rock up late because you failed um, the bag weight check, does not it? On your on your small bag, I think was it? Yeah, on the small yeah. bag. I, yeah, I thought I had everything sorted, and then that failed, and then the stuff that I had to leave, I didn't really want to just leave in the car park, so I took that back down to the car. <laughs> and then it's like, well, I don't really want to run to the car, so I just fast walked it to the car, came yeah. back up. So it wasn't like I was in a massive rush. It was just that I was late. <laughs> yeah, you missed the team photo. Uh, uh, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah that, that was on my mind as well. Was the bag weight checks because I hadn't really checked my bag properly, and then I was fiddling with bits of kits, you know, in the, a couple of days before. So I didn't actually know what my bag was going to turn out like, and it was going to be close, and it was close. It was just under, but yeah, that was yeah. that was on my mind a lot. So yeah, these little things, they just pick at you and they, they overtake your brain so when you start heading up like go out we leave castle and i remember just turning the corner and I, like down the castle and i could see you see you leading everyone out and it was like when you start leading everyone out everyone that doesn't most people know i assume but you went out over conway mountain yeah so Con conway mountains the uh first checkpoint isn't it yeah so and how did you feel how did you feel once you got going and then in the first say hour or so, so I know you say um, you didn't enjoy it, but like it's it's still a long yeah, day, isn't it? I wasn't enjoying it, but um, it was James and I. We got on the on the fell first, so it was, we were just almost we yeah, had the same pace. But then once we hit the first dibber, I just shot off. Then um, I think, yeah. and then yeah, it was a it was a lonely first half compared to last year where I had Kim and Russell the whole, the whole way. The three of us were grouped together, um, yeah. so straight away from Conway Mountain, it's just me on my own then. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't really check behind me at all, so I didn't know what was going on or who was behind me, but I couldn't sense anyone, couldn't hear anyone. Um, they were, I could tell, like, because when I'm going past places and there's um little pockets of crowd and you know they're clapping and cheap ringing yeah, bells yeah. i could hear them behind me ringing it was obviously either james or chris behind me so i, I knew it you know, was a it was a nice little gap on that first part but um and well, what started going wrong on that first part was i didn't carry that much water with me only about, only about a half a liter because i had gels in the one bottle and water in the other and it was actually really really warm that day yeah it wasn't what I was expecting. So, um, no. yeah, I ran out of water really quickly and there's not a lot of water on that first half. So um, I was sweating. Yeah. I remember I remember hitting that drum and I was sweating buckets thinking, have I got like a fever or something? But I yeah. with someone else oh, I was, was running with. I was like, I was like are you hot, mate? <laughs> <laughs> but I was, yeah, I was sweating quite a lot. So I Yeah, remember. I was absolutely dripping. I was, it was just up there soaking like I just um, jumped in a pool or something. It was, um, it was warm. Yeah. And once I went out of water, then it was like right, a little bit of dehydration was kicking in, and then I was starting to struggle to get the food in. So yeah, yeah, wasn't wasn't that wasn't a, a bright idea to put to put the gels in the bottle, but well, you know, 
But um, so yeah, when, when the food stops going in, then it's when you, you, your body aches, then doesn't it? You, you yeah, start to yeah. feel things well, and your feet hurt, and uh, yeah, it, it all starts going going to shit. Then when you stop eating, Plus you start <laughs> thinking like, what's to come? Because you know the course so well, and it's like, yeah, oh, I, I should I should be feeling easy here. So what kind of <laughs> and I don't feel easy. So then that that puts a, puts a bit of stress on you. Then you start. I imagine if I was you. So I'd be doing the same. You don't hit the descents the same. I know you mentioned like off panel when you didn't feel as comfortable as you should. No, be. no, I wasn't wasn't happy going down there at all. It was just I was really, really, I was really, really tense. And um, really tense all day. So and, that's, yeah. and you, you can't descend properly when you're like that. So yeah, you you should be really careful and you you just crap with with your foot in and then yeah, it's just it's just dodgy. You can't you can't hit yeah. the downhills fast when you when you're all tense like that. Yeah. So so like head mindset wise, what you're telling yourself at that point, or what kind of you, what's going through your mind? Because like I know, like from speaking to you at the end of each day, disappointment was there, yes, but there was never like I'll be honest, like the belief of being able to win the whole thing never left. Not for my, I didn't see that in you. You still had that belief. So, yeah. I'm assuming yeah, so you had that at some point. It's a, it's a six-day race, isn't it? And everything can happen in these races. I mean, and everything, well, everything did. It was a, it was a really un- unpredictable at, at the front of the race. It was a, it was a really, really good race to, uh, to watch. Um, but so yeah, even though you know you're gonna have shit days and you're gonna have shit times, but then the next day your competitors they could be having shit days. So yeah, yeah. you you. So, yeah, never, never, never give up on it because, especially in those first few days, because a lot can happen and there's still a long way to go. Um, but yeah, so they when they they caught up with me after the support point on the Trivan climb, and yeah. They, yeah, they were they were they were they were in good spirits and they were having a good time, and yeah, I was just like I was pretty pretty dying going up um, Trivan. I had the flashbacks of me and you going up Trivan in 2019. <laughs> it was just yeah. like just a complete fucking mess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then yeah, so they they took me. They were they were happy. They were having fun. Chris was just Chris was um yeah. He, he, Chris left us on on Trivan. He descended Trivan really really quickly and really well. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, and then in the in the, I see it, I could see him in the foreground. Then just see him smash it up to the gliders. He was just actually hammering yeah. it up there. So yeah, he's a he was good. He was good to watch. But I was just envious of him all the time because I was like, well, that's the effort I was putting in last year. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't I do it now? You know, it was uh, really playing on my mind. That was yeah. And was that the point where you thought, yeah, and I, I like a, the poles would have been a better idea, or do you think it's just because they want so, didn't feel so great. Yeah, so polls. My, my view on polls. I've never been like anti polls. You know, yeah. if I was in UTMB no, or whatnot, then I would use polls. But things like the Dragon's Back, where it's you know the essence of it is fell running, and um, so try and keep your know, those traditions alive. And this is the first time I think where we've had front runners with polls on the Dragon's Back. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, you know, Jim Man, he's, he's never used polls, that he ever will. Um, uh, Galen didn't use polls. Um, Marcus Scott didn't use polls. No. So, yeah, this, this is the, it was the first time now that the Dragons back front runners were using polls. And on days one and days two, yeah, I was just watching James and Chris. And, uh, they were just smashing up the hills. And uh, I was just absolutely wasted <laughs> just getting up there. Um, so yeah. yeah, there was a point where I was thinking, right, I need to start changing my ways a bit, and I need to need to evolve and join them. I guess now, no things are changing. I mean, UK is behind on the, the whole pole scene, isn't it, compared to the rest of yeah. Europe? But then we we don't have big hills. But it's different, think, like you say, you don't have you don't have those long sustained hour plus climbs. To be honest, no, like, unless you're going up some various paths, like. I like I you can definitely do the dragons back without poles. It's more of a case like yeah. seeing the lads, seeing Chris and James, like I've seen a lot of people use poles and they've obviously put the effort in because they were efficient and, and yeah. they were quite Oh they, they, were both, they were both really, really good with them. And yeah, yeah. they were they both just gained an advantage big time. 
So yeah, yeah. they've definitely they've changed my way of thinking now. So yeah, even on races like Dragons Back, I'll I'll be using poles from now on. So as soon as I get back training, that's the first thing I'm doing now is um getting yeah. poles. I've had the guys from Silver already message me because they see my blog. Like, oh, we've got polls for you. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, then. Good. Go on, then. <laughs> yeah. You'll be up about eight poles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, they, they, they've got walking poles. But they, they, they are bringing out a lightweight carbon pole that's going to take nice. on Likey uh, next year, but they're going to send yeah. me a, a test, test set. To, uh, have a look at so so, some of the polls you can get these days are just insane compared to like, five years ago even. yeah i oh, know yeah i think you, you don't even feel like you're wearing them now i think they're so light isn't it so yeah, yeah. i uh i let mark use mine for the first few days yeah you were mark, you yeah. just attended all your polls out i think don't you need them yeah <laughs> well, I, well i carried them the first day because i thought i still yeah. probably wouldn't have used them on day one carried them just because they wouldn't fit in my in my main bag, but I thought I'm going to take them. And then Mark snapped the pole. Mark, Mark Curtis, is, he snapped the pole on day one. So then I gave him my poles. He tells right. him it's just the injury. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, to pick up some questions. So David Taylor is asking something as mad as a dragon's back. How much lead time and training would you need? As in, is it something that's better to plan a couple, three years out? Yeah, in reality, like it's the same. Like my standard answer is, it's a big time investment. It's a big financial investment for the majority of people. You might only get one shot at this. It's now every year, so there's no rush for people. I think it's not. It's, it's achievable for the most people. Everyone really. It's just the timeline that you have to give yourself. So it's more about what is your background. Um, and that kind of thing it's, it's so hard and it's so hard in between the running and it's day after day and it's it's just something that should be yeah re really looked into that if you really want to do the drags back it doesn't matter if you do it in one year or four years take that time be honest with yourself and get confident that you can do half a day a day a couple of days that kind of thing there's lots of mountain marathons yeah, the same organisers do lots of three-day ones, don't they? Things like that. Yeah, yeah. But the Lakeland, Lakeland three-day. Lakeland three-day is yeah. pretty much. But I'd definitely go and crack at that and see how see how you get on. Um, yeah, it depends on the person. Like, don't look at yeah. like. But I would. <laughs> I entered nine weeks out, but then I've been in the hills for fifteen years. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, um, just give talk about um, time. talk about James. So James won this year's race. I could tell you how prepared yeah. he was. I saw James in the beacons in the December before, so that he was yeah. doing his day five rackies then. So that's how prepared yeah. he was. Yeah, and he's a he's a good runner. He's a fast hard runner. So, but yeah, yeah, that's months and months and months of preparation he was going through. So he was you know, and he was ready. So yeah, and it, but and there's lots of good runners that don't make it past a couple of days and there's lots of people with a hiking background and good mountaineering background that will make it to the finish so they're just good at looking after themselves moving efficiently through the hills feeding themselves stuff like that they're all the things you need to work on don't stress about how many miles per week you're doing and all that kind of stuff um, yeah it's about moving it's about speak. moving in that crap stuff yeah yeah so that's, 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 the last, that's that's the slowest parts of the race is the crap rocky stuff from days one and days yeah. two uh, the stuff yeah. that you don't see on the, so they are amazing, the highlights, YouTube and the videos and stuff. It's the stuff that you don't see on that that can catch people out, I think. Miles of not really knowing what direction you should be going in bogginess. In yeah, day, day two, loads and loads of bogs and tussocks and things. Yeah, yeah. Me and James were having a, having a whale of a time. We were just completely hitting <laughs> it in every bog. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Uh, uh charlotte is asking what food drink do you did you crave the most you can answer that first um i don't know i don't crave anything really <laughs> just yeah. uh, i just it's weird isn't it yeah no i don't don't crave anything i look forward to the unlimited cakes you get every evening at the dragon's back i'm always yeah that's, yeah. that's a great getting back to camp and you've got unlimited chips and cakes 
Um, but <laughs> during the race, I don't, I don't crave anything. I just have to eat what I've got on me, you know, um, bars and gels, and that's it. I don't have any variety, which is a uh, yeah, something I need yeah. to change up on as well. But, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't crave things really. Yeah. I don't crave things until it's like bone in front of you. Like when you run to McCunford and everyone's nipping in those shops, I did crave like a fizzy drink. But I didn't yeah. eat it or crave it beforehand. It was like... Yeah, same really. It's like, oh, you think, oh, that'd be nice. And you're running past a cake shop and ice cream shop and things. But I you seen the other races <laughs> yeah. go in the shops and you're thinking... <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, um, yeah, and in the evening I would crave you just crave food it's so strange isn't it you just like whatever was put in front of yeah. you that night because they look after you so well i'd have happily eating it um, yeah food and each, day, each day i think you just eat more and more and more don't you i think yeah i, I, I think i lost how many bowls of chips i would have you know on days four it's just yeah just you just const, constantly eating in the evening it's good because your body needs it so uh yeah, yeah it's great <laughs> So day one two, give me um how, how far behind were you? Hour, something like that. So it wasn't like it wasn't um, a massive disaster. You still having good days. Like day day one, yeah, thirty no, minutes. You ran. I'd say I was say I'd say I was an hour behind on day two, and then I was an hour and a half behind on day three. Uh, yeah. So yeah, day he, three, he, was like, he, was, he, was, he was always gaining half hour every day, and he was. Like he was running well, wasn't he? Like it was, it was impressive. Yeah, because... yeah, no, it was impressive seeing Chris. Yeah, especially on the uphills, he's um, because he's, he's really tall, isn't he? He's got long yeah. arms, so he's just absolutely hammering up the hills. Yeah, and he's good, and he's just just totally aggressive, totally going for yeah. it. You know, risking it. I mean, this is his first multi-day race. I don't even know what his background in ultra running is. I don't don't know if he's done a lot because he, he's um. He's a good Ironman uh, triathlete, so I don't know how many okay. ultra marathons he's done. But whatever he's yeah. done, anyway, he was ready. He's uh, he's good. He knew what he was doing. It was good. Yeah, yeah. It was great seeing him. You know, he had his top off all the time. He had his leather holsters for his poles. Uh, he was uh, yeah. <laughs> he was looking cool. <laughs> what I liked yeah. is like even on good friends with you, it is was the aggression. It wasn't like he was. He were taking five minutes out or ten minutes out. He was just hammering every day until he couldn't hammer it anymore. Yeah, which, which was class to see, wasn't it? Even no, no it's imagine. what you want to see, isn't it? You know, otherwise you, you don't want a sport where everybody is playing it safe and taking it easy. That's just one fucking yeah. boring sport. <laughs> so yeah, you know, you, you want to see you want to see people go going for it and pushing the limits and finding the boundaries. Yeah, that's what, that's what it's about for me anyway. That's, that's why I want to see my ultra running. And yeah, Chris, I'm glad Chris was there. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Yeah. And James just seemed to be steady every time I saw him. Like, yeah. Like Chris was, um, Chris was steady. the He's still one. pushing it though, because yeah, I know it was a couple of times where James had to have a sit down <laughs> just yeah. to get himself together. You know, he, he was pushing himself, but he was, he was definitely the most consistent out of the three of us. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, go on then. So day three, it's a it, it's a long old day, and it you start with Cadder and everything. Like yeah. there, there is some day three if you're gonna take the odd little shortcut or better line there there as well. Um, yeah. So on day kind of three, um, James and Chris they said this to me as well. They were I think James said it. They were copying my GPX file from last year when yeah. I took that horrible shortcut up to yeah. uh, I've forgotten what it's called now. Uh, Tara New. Yes, I mean, yeah, something. Yeah, so I but I, but, about it, didn't I? yeah, but then I, I'd copied <laughs> Jim Mann before, and I remember Tom Hollins t- showed me it as well. So I'd done it, and I thought it was absolutely shite. <laughs> it's, it's more climb, it's steeper, and it's just covered in tussocks. So yeah, I wasn't going to do that again. But then James and uh, Chris, they took that line. Both did. So I took the normal recommended route, and I beat them to the summit. So. Yeah, I, I think yeah, just, just stick to the recommended route on that on that one. So um, yeah, I, I was because when you look at the map, it's an out and back for anyone that doesn't know. So it's out up steep climb, levels out. It's not too long, is it? As long as you're like feeling okay. Yeah. It's just the fact that it's an out and back. 
or you can take a direct line through the woods through this crappy stuff and i remember asking Sai beforehand you know that line you took last year is it any good and he said no so that was my decision and then yeah. as i was hiking up the up uh the two lads came down but you hadn't passed i knew that i'd, I'd been hiking up with you not that long ago yeah so i knew at that point oh simon's made up some good time now but i didn't know that they'd taken a different line so yeah uh, so they took the crap line and then yeah so i, I was first into mccantless into the uh into the support point yeah yeah. yeah, feeling good then, or feeling? Um, I know feeling, after that. Uh, yeah, I was good into the support point, but it was, I was always struggling getting out of support points, which is always feeling heavy. My legs were don't know what was, what was going on. Um, yeah, so then, yeah, then the back half of that day three, it started getting a bit warm again, and mm. but yeah, I, I started struggling and I started stopped stopped eating again. And the same thing again, once you, once you stop eating, you just, you just can't move fast, as fast as you want to. Um, yeah. don't know what was going on, really. Um, I'd be eating the same race food for a year and a bit now. I'm not sure if maybe it's time for a bit of a change up. Mm-hmm. Need to have a look at it. Maybe I'm just getting a bit fatigued with the, the, the food I'm having, which is just a bar and a gel. That's all I have. There's no variety. So I'm going to uh, assess that now in my next training and see 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 what i can do with that but yeah it just meant that a, a crap back half on day three really really slow heavy legs that body felt heavy um pain as well my legs my legs started hurting so yeah it's all it was all down to not getting carbohydrate in you wasn't it yeah um, a little bit yeah mm, so, plus yeah. you've got to, like to remind people as well it's like your intensity is a lot higher so if you can't and maybe someone that's just completing each day by the cutoff. So if that carbohydrate intake or that calorie intake isn't there, then you will notice it more than anyone else. Yeah, oh, I do big time. Yeah. <clears throat> I know when I'm, I'm under carbs. Yeah, I just can't move and I, I feel sore and feel the pain. Yeah, so. Yeah. I remember a couple of times, like the first two days, I couldn't eat amazingly in evenings and usually I'm throwing it down. And from then on, that point, I could. And I remember, I don't know if it was the third or the fourth. I remember you were about to go to bed or something, and you said, um, no, I haven't eaten enough. And I thought, he's still in there. He's still in this because he's aware enough to go and yeah. throw, some more, throw, yeah. throw some more food down in, kind of thing. It's yeah, it was, um, yeah I, got, I got up a couple of times, I think, when I went to bed, and I actually got back up and had another protein shake or had another bowl of chips or something. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Day four then, the rest day, recovery day. Day four, the rest day, recovery day, yeah. That's um, that's how I looked at it in last year's race. And then that's when Russell Bentley put the, put some time on me. So, yeah, but no, yeah. There's, no such, there's no such thing as a rest day in the Dragon's Back. No, every day is a hard day. Uh, I remember yeah. that, eve- that evening, that morning, you were you were banged up for it, though. Um, which, again, was good to see. It was like you were, you were positive going out. It wasn't. We didn't really talk about times too much, did we? It was just no. Yeah, feel, I, mean, I, feel I, I knew I, I knew I was already hours behind my times from last year, so I knew I wasn't going to yeah. uh, do that performance again. Um, but so day four, this is where I had a little word with myself. I, I was like, right, fuck the race now. That was my that was my attitude. Right, just uh, start enjoying it now because I wasn't having a great time on the race up until that point. So you can right, come on, you, you're here now, so. Have fun, enjoy it. Don't worry about the race now. Just just go and do it. I know I knew I was gonna see my dog at the support point. I knew I was gonna see my all, all the parents. So I was like, right, go on, let's just go out there now. Let's just um have a laugh. Now so I started with Chris. Um we've done the first climb together, and then there's that really, really boggy, shitty section and that yeah. really steep, muddy, crappy bit that goes through the woods. I thought, yeah. that, I thought that was really dodgy this year. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah just I just like, followed bouncing off, as, bouncing off like, trees. as a hood. Uh, Chris went I down mean, there. Remember... You've got to think, like, 200 other plus other people have gone through it. Probably already. Yeah, That's so it was pretty tuned up when me and Chris are going through it. <clears throat> I remember, yeah, I think Chris must have hammered it down there. Um, yeah, because mm. he just he just went out of sight. Yeah, so I don't know how he done it, but... Yeah, I think he was just taking the trees up as he went. I saw him doing it. Yeah, could have been. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 
Yeah, so he, he went out of sight, but I was all right with that now. I was, I was thinking, right, I'm not I'm not going to bother racing. I'm just going to just uh, just move through this now as, as, as um, best as I can. But it wasn't long then before I found, my, I found that I caught him up on like the first on the first hill. Uh, you've got to be a road section then. So yeah. I caught him up on that, and I could see him then. So when you go when you drop through anyone that's run it you hit like the wind farm and it's almost like a relief because you know you, the worst of that crap is, is gone did you feel good on that it's like a fire road out yeah i did I, I, he's, 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 st- he's still well out of sight now so but no yeah. but i was running well down there yeah i was um you, any any bit of easy section on dragon's back you need to take advantage of if you can move faster than anything then do it so yeah, yeah it's a nice it's a nice gravelly road isn't it through um through the woods and then you go yeah. down, you end up on on a proper road before you hit the first hill. That's right. And then um, that hill, that first hill, and I don't know what happened to me. I just started running up hills like I used to, just yeah, piece of piss. Yeah, and I'm absolutely hammering up there and running without any effort. And it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm been doing that all week. I've been struggling getting up the hills. You know, really, 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 really tense and putting a lot of effort in. Now I'm just hammering up this hill, and then um. Yeah, catch up with Chris then. So yeah. run with him for a bit. Um, and then there's a couple of summits you do. They're not really summits. They're really small. They're quite small hills, aren't they? Really rolling. Yeah, yeah. And there's another road section. So I ran with Chris for the road, and then we hit one of the checkpoints together. And then on that descent, the descent down into the Ellen Village. That's where I left him then. And then I went yeah. into the support point. And then I was feeling really, really good. Then I was pumped up. And I was up for it. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's why I saw that's you as well. Time. First time I saw yeah, you, I was, and you were trying to stick your nuts in my face. Yeah, peanuts. You want some, you want some salted peanuts or some cola? Because <laughs> the thing is, I could see, I could see that you got like, like you say, you were pumped up for it. Yeah, kind of thing. And and like you don't want to get in your way, but it was like here's some options don't just because you're pumped up it's the easy thing is to just fly in and fly out but i think you did the right thing you did everything you need to and then yeah you yeah you're, you're off yeah i'm pretty it's pretty basic for me in the support points so i just sit down throw my rubbish out get that yeah. began the bin and then i just fill up bottles and fill up the food and go that's pretty, that's pretty much it i don't like don't like to stick around no, um, yeah, but that's why I saw all, all the family, saw the dog. So yeah. Yeah, it was really, really cool to see everyone. It did give me a big uplift, that did. Um, Matt Ward as well, he had a little word with Matt when I sit, sat down as well, so it was always good to speak to him. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I just went for it then on that second half, um, running all of the hills really, really easily, really, really fast. It was a... Yeah. I was, I was, <laughs> That's where I wanted to be all week. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so day four, I turned up for the race when I planned. And I, in that morning, I planned not to race. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, just a mindset thing, isn't it? Yeah, I just relaxed my mind at the start by not giving a shit. And yeah. then the, the magic happened then. Yeah, what I, what I trained to do happened. Just Plus perfect just... Time, timing as well because you're four days in. Any hill is tough, but if anything, that especially like when you come out of that checkpoint, there is a climb. But if you're feeling good on that climb, that just yeah. gives you confidence. Yeah, it's a nice climb. It's a nice gradual long climb on the road. That is. Yeah. So yeah, it's just perfect for me. Yeah, I could absolutely just smash yeah. it up there. Um, it's, yeah, so picking just yeah, I was just picking us picking the hills off, and then I caught up with James. Ran with James for like a. a a couple of minutes this time and yeah i just pushed on then absolutely put the roads to use then because mm. the la- the back half of day four loads is a lot of road it's a it's a 5k stretch i was in well, it was like a 3k stretch, oh, 10K and stretch. the last stretch is a 10 is a, the la- the very last stretch is a 10k stretch yeah. it's a downhill 10k stretch so yeah i just went for it on those sections then and um, yeah done a bit of a russell bentley just went for it and um mm. yeah i well, what did I gain? I gained half hour then on Chris's time. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's, uh, in, reality, in reality, that was in about half a day as well, wasn't it? That's from yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, so, yeah, I was, I was happy with that. And it was a big boost for me. 
and then I and then um, I found out that Chris was starting was starting to actually struggle physically. Then yeah, his legs were starting to give way a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was back in the race. Felt back in. I felt in the race then, and I was happy and I was relaxed. And yeah, just just uh, it just just took four days to to get there. Uh, what your what your thoughts on? Because we'll touch on it in a minute. But like for me, I I actually felt better on that day four. Yeah, different different area of the race. But yeah, when I was when I got onto that road section, I could easily run up the hill, and I could and I and I started flying down the other side. Kind of thing, or moving yeah. it quite well. Trying to put put it to good use, like knowing what I know now, because it's, it's kind of happened in 2019 as well. The day after, that's when like the tendonitis hit. Like, I don't know what your thoughts are, but maybe me, <laughs> maybe running hard down that road isn't, isn't yeah. a good idea. I don't know. No, um, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> No, because it's you causing damage. It, yeah, if you if you run down the hill hard, it's like on anything, it's easy to say it's damage. locked, isn't it? But it's mm. not really because I know that I ran quite hard down that road. Yeah, and then the next day I picked up an injury. So yeah, you know. I had um a little twinge in my shin end of day three, which is normal. I always get you know a little pain here and there, so I just yeah. you know put some ibuprofen gel on it, and that that was it. I was forgotten about then, but then. Yeah, then um, absolutely smashed those roads on day four, and then mm. and yeah, I knew I knew I was causing damage. Just you know, I was hoping I could just you know just don't do enough so I can get to the end. And then day five, I was smashing those roads as well, and I think yeah, yeah I think all of that equated to the the problem. I think. Yeah, and I'm not, and I'm, and I'm not wearing my road shoes. Yeah, I'm wearing my fell shoes. So yeah, yeah. you got more shock going through your legs. Day mm. five was the day that you knew that you could make big moves because it's what you train on. That's you know. Yeah, well, I'm obviously confident for day five, but I didn't think I was going to make that big of a move on there because yeah. as I'm as I'm running by the spectators, they're all telling me how big of a gap I was creating the gap was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger so I was yeah. like Jesus I am having having a good time here <laughs> you know yeah I, oh yeah I was absolutely running class um I was I was what I wanted to do just picking off the hills running up running up all the hills running down um yeah just in the zone big time but I knew there was a pain in my shin and mm. it was just getting just gradually getting worse and worse and worse each each descent. It was getting worse and worse and worse, especially on Van Ned. That was yeah. where I started doing a bit bit of a limp. Then um, I was being careful then trying to get down hills, and then for down Van Var, that's when a big limp started kicking in. Then, and then yeah, I was limped my way up to the support point, uh, the water support point. And that's what I oh, see. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a crowd of people there. I'm like, oh fuck's sake, I'm in bad shape here. <laughs> yeah, it's um, funny because you get into that point of I, you're, I imagine it's a bit like denial because you know you know what it is. Yeah, but again, you you're running well, it's in performance wise. So it's like, oh, maybe it'll just disappear. It's like crazy. <laughs> that is not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, um, up, up hills are fine. Up hills are alright, and they, they always are with these. These lower leg yeah. injuries are because you're not putting the pressure on you on your front of your yeah. leg, on the front of the bottom of your leg. But yeah, so we've got a Penavan um, down Jacob's ladder, and that's just the back end of Penavan. Ross, the cameraman, who's following me down. I remember laughing at him. I was telling him, I can't be looking cool right now. <laughs> don't, don't, don't fail me. I'm just limping down uh, Jacob's ladder. But the pain was easing a bit. But I don't know if that's just because I was having a laugh with Ross, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, then got cribbing and then down cribbing. That was it then for me. Uh, the leg just stopped and that was it. Yeah. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't move. I remember Sam caught me up. Sam and David caught me up. You know, like, oh, are yeah. you all right on all this? You know, do you need this? Do you need that? And then I was just, I knew. Uh, I, yeah. That was the decision for me then. Uh, I was done, which was a bit shit because uh, I think um, I had an hour lead. At some point at that water support point. So yeah, if you know, if I could have got to the end of day five, 
could that have sealed the deal? Maybe, but we will never know now. Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... I raced my guts off that day. Um, couldn't do yeah, anything but else. It would cost yeah. to be, be around it because, uh, yeah, just knowing that you were you were having a good run on the course because I I just got the, I spoke to Matt. I don't remember seeing you on the course. No, I tell you where you went past me on the you went down the parachute and uh, dropped it. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. Okay. And I went a slight. I went a different way. Steve Ashworth was filming me and that's when my leg started hurting at that point right. a bit like you said with ross he started he started following me with the camera so i was like right i'm gonna try and look good here i <laughs> flew down <laughs> but as soon as and he slipped on his bum a few times and i was laughing, we were laughing <laughs> and i was thinking i'll put steve on his bum and then as i then I, and then there was a bit of a climb and again my leg felt okay and then literally the next ascent I was like, just, just grounding down not to the yeah. extreme of you but it was like I knew it, I knew, I felt it before, so I knew, like, when I was pottering down, people are then coming up to me and almost going past me, and then I got to the bottom and Matt caught up with me, and I said, and and uh, James had not long gone through, right. and then I said I said to Matt, oh, where's, where's Si? He was like, he's gone, he's, he's gone, so you'd overtaken me just on a different line. Right, um, okay. And that's, what, that's, that's when I knew, I was... I was in pain, but I was buzzing as well. I was like, "Oh, he's on a flyer here." Because I knew, I knew from what was to come and yeah. what you could run on it. I was like, "Oh, this is exciting!" Now. Yeah, um, no, um, yeah. I mean, if I was going to win, it was going to be on that day. So I just, so all I could do was just go for it on that day. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, it's a real shame how it happened, but yeah. Oh well, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to. You know, I, if I could, I could have carried on maybe, but I'm not going to break myself for any race no. physically. Yeah, it's, it's, this is just a hobby at the end of the day, so I'm not going to damage myself big time just for the sake of a, a race. But there was, yeah. there was like, um, there was, there was still like, call it like, good honor in the way that you finished because it was like you did everything you could, then you you accepted it and. Yeah, no, just, yeah, no. I, just left me without a good night. I know, mate, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't know because I was going through my own trauma, basically like dragging my leg up and over those hills. And then, like like you say, that, that final descent because it gets steep and then you feel all that rock yeah, by the waterfall. It's a big descent. And it's... Oh, mate, I was just in agony kind of thing. And I was thinking, I'm not going to be able to Did you finish it. late? Was it late in the night? Oh. Fin finished at quarter past nine. And at oh, one did point, you? I was, Shit, thinking, I was, I was the last really late then. Yeah. yeah, considering I ran the first half with uh, Mark and Rich, easy, and we were chatting and everything, and that's when it then it came on. You started so with them too, then. Started started with yeah. them, ran the first with half them. with them. Okay, and you'll know how, and they ran it really well. And then when yeah, because I, I I ran I remember running past them. So yeah, I was wondering because I ran with them like... until about thirty five k something like that. So okay. it's only after that it I was literally walking up. <laughs> kind of thing right. and it was it's just painful mate and they, the first time I found out about you is you know like you, you finish and then because it was the last night we were there the day six start times were there with the yeah. leaders and I was like what's that where's Sam's name when's he leaving <laughs> and I was well, just, and I just <laughs> to the time and everything I was, I was in such KFC. a bad <laughs> like Mark Bless him, like he he took my stuff to the tent, he got sort my food out because I, I was limping around, getting cold, oh, not no. not in a good place. And then, oh shit. And I was thinking, it was one of those things, I was in a different place to you. I was like, I wanna, I kind of, I can cope with the pain on the sixth if yeah. I can kind of, if I can move kind of thing. So, but it's one of those things you could wake up and not be able to get out your bloody, walk out your sleeping bag. Luckily, Woke up and I walked the first, literally had to walk the first kilometer, walk the first climb, and then I did get into a bit of a groove. Painful, but yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's lots of flat, isn't it, on day six? So, yeah, you can, you can move fairly quick, even if you are limping yeah. around, I think. So, it's kind of a blessing, a, really. Day, day six is a blessing, I think, because 
it's it's quite it's quite an easy day, and I think it, it anyone is, yeah. in bad somebody in bad shape can still get it done if they if they really yeah. wanted to get that the, the, the baby dragon, they can do it. That's right. Yeah. Right, before we move on, let's pick up a question Martin asked it ages ago. Martin Webb completed UTS 165 uh, last year and Kate Raff this year. Hoping to volunteer on Dragon's Back next year and then run it the following after. CWU, what's that? Oh, Kate Raff eases you in. How much effort do you need to put into day one and two to make cut off? Sorry, well, for, for Dragon's Back? Yeah, I imagine so. I think if you've completed UTS 165, I mean, I don't want to just say you should be okay making cutoffs. Um, I think you'll be, you, you're, I'd say you're there, ready. I think you'll be f- well, yeah. well below the cutoffs. I think, yeah, you'll be, so he's done Cape Raff and UTS. Yeah. Um, yeah, no problems with the cutoffs. I mean, but cutoffs are difficult, but oh, I mean, this is, I don't know. It's like if you're ready for the race, the cutoffs. You, you shouldn't be worried about the cutoffs too much, in my opinion. Especially on day one now, because it's the hour earlier. I, I hear yeah. there's only two or three people that missed that cutoff, so yeah, it's a, it's a good shout that extra hour. That is, yeah, got yeah. got a lot of people through on day one. That's right, and then yeah. and then you're often running, Martin. Yeah, but I would say, yeah, that's especially by twenty four day. You're volunteering next year that'll give you an amazing insight yeah and, it'll, and and that will teach you probably more than anything i imagine about how the week works about the cutoffs about where they are so yeah by 2020 you'll be, you'll be bang up yeah uh darren collins and crew <laughs> hi gary did you wear your little shoes serious <laughs> now how, how did your feet cope over the week didn't wear my little shoes mate um Mainly because they wouldn't the pass kit check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I passed kit check. I mean, I don't want to get in trouble, but I passed kit check, check without my bag, technically, because I'm on <laughs> <laughs> you, you might sneak through with no shoes. Um, yeah, but no, I didn't make my feet. I, I'm lucky that I, was, like, I think size quite similar. Such would never get blisters, don't suffer from trench foot. No matter how wet they get, really, um, the only thing, time they do get blisters is in one specific shoe. I do like, and if I don't tape it around my ankle, they put up my ankle. So it's just one of those things. I know people do struggle with their feet and have to look after them and stuff. And I think that's the main thing. Whether you struggle or not, it's just looking after. It. If it's a little blister yeah. or if it's rubbing, if it's grit, grit, just clean your feet, look after them. Yeah, so um... have those problems. I'm I'm quite good with my feet. I I do my foot care weeks and weeks before the race. Um, I'm using foot creams and filing feet and doing whatnot. You know, just getting rid of all the hard skin like six weeks before a race. And then I yeah. t- I tape my feet every day as well. I tape my you yeah. know fr- from from the get go my feet are taped. And yeah, I, I never get blisters, touch wood really, so uh, or any foot problem. Um, yeah, it takes a bit of time, get, but it takes a bit of time, you, at, get, you know, half hour, hour in, in the morning, yeah. but it's worth it in the end. Uh, you get to learn where your little blisters are on the feet. You get, you know where something will rub, whether it's a pack, like I, I'll, I'll rub there. It's not the pack's fault, but I know that I should tape it before I start, like Sai so said. Um, that's all part of the training, all part of the recce's. You should know where these places are going to rub a little bit, then just tape it up. Then that's much easier. I don't know about side, but I find it like when you you are taping up, or you might have to like drain a little bit of blood. I I find it quite therapeutic. I like it. It's like right, I, I know I'm doing. I know I'm in the race now. It's like, yeah. Look after your feet. They're not going to be a problem if I've taped them off and stuff. It's not. And then yeah, and then yeah, you kind of just know you're in it. Then it's. I know some people struggle really bad with blisters. And they might get trench foot kind of coming on to wet feet all day. So it's just a case of use so drainage over waterproof if you're in the summer, mate. I would and do it that way because you're not going to avoid bogs. Your feet are going to get wet. So you've got waterproof stuff on. It's, it's not going to go anywhere usually. Yeah. Um, but sometimes my advice is find someone who does these big races that does struggle with feet problems. 
again, I'm coming from a position where I just don't suffer too bad, so sorry. Yeah, no, it's, just, um, it's, it's a big range, isn't it? Yeah, like you said, yeah. some people, their feet fall apart off day one. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know what they do, but... <laughs> uh. um, Ross is asking, people talk about sorting admin out when you finish the day. What's your routine on sorting yourself out in the evening after racing and in the morning before the race? You go. All right. Um, so I'm one of the faster runners, so... I get the luxury of having a lot of time in the evenings. So my fit when I get to camp, my first thing is food. I straight away go for uh, chips and my protein shake. That's my first thing I do. Um, and then I'll go and wash in the in the river. And then I'll go and set my sleep stuff up. And then I will. Um, and then six o'clock. Then that's when the main meal starts. And that's when I go and have my proper meal. And after that, then um, yeah, just eat eat as much as I can really and then um I go to bed and then I sort my feet out then in, in the morning so I'll retake feet first first thing in the mornings. Um yeah breakfast and go. So yeah, pretty basic routine for, for myself. Quick cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> Quick cuddle with Gary. Make sure he's alright. Um, I got on in my mornings I've also got to clean up after Gary every morning as well. So make sure he's make sure he's all packed and ready for his day. Yeah, then then I'm ready then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, mine's pretty similar. Um, although I'll take a little bit longer in those races. So it is about <laughs> think about what you absolutely need to get done. Like socialising and chatting to everyone is is good around the camp, but the priority is, um, and I've coached people through it that are. Uh, kind of towards the back end my advice is usually like set your sleep stuff up you can have a protein bar or some kind of source of protein while you're doing that fantastic do it then go and eat your food Just get your kit ready a little bit for tomorrow and then if you've got time to chat chill out then that's good too but just think write down the priorities for you beforehand whether you're getting in before six o'clock like say si, or just before cut off after 9 p.m., it'll probably look a little bit different. You might not have the luxury of jumping in the river like like we were enjoying. No, no you won't. Food. You won't be able to do. You won't be able to do any of the luxuries really. The, the people yeah. who finish at the back of the pack, yeah, I take my hat off to them all the time. You know, you really have to prioritize things, then, don't you? So it's just, yeah. I think it's just food is obviously priority. Washing, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, to make sure you eat and make sure you get to sleep, I think. Eat and sleep, yeah. that's those are the two priorities. Make sure you get them done. And if you've got time in the morning to sort some kit out, sort your feet out. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's um, I do take my hat off to those people. And just think of it like, um, so when you've done it a few times, it does become a little bit like second nature. Like, granted, like Simon will tell you. Maybe I'm a little bit too relaxed because every single day I left something in the tent. So I don't even know how, well, not even in the tent. <laughs> so I, left. I think the first one was a bag of clothes, wasn't it? Was that the yeah. first one? Then um, I, I have, carry a bag I, full of uh, all of my yeah. clean clothes. So to give you an idea, you pack up your 15 kilogram overnight bag that will then meet you in the, in the next tent, in the next camp. So yeah, I left that the first day, had to repack that the second day. Um, oh, I found your coffee mug. Found a co- so I was just somewhere about else, to start. I? Check my bags in. I've got my kit, and I'm just about to go. And Simon's uh, doing a bit of washing up. <laughs> is this your coffee mug? So it's like, oh yeah, mate. I've already packed some stick it in yours. So we had to look after my coffee mug. Um, then another day, I even tried to leave. So you get you have to do kit check, and I had to I, I tried to leave without my 15 kilogram bag. I don't know how I managed to do that. <laughs> Just trying to travel fast and light. Don't know if we forget about fifteen kilograms. <laughs> yeah, and then and then the final straw was I even I even tried to check out without my mountain bag, <laughs> without basically. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I wouldn't so have got that. Mark, Mark, told, Mark told me about that one, so I wrote in the blog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, I had great support around me. The lads looked for me. Yeah, but, um, we all look after each other in different ways. You do. You do. <laughs> yeah. The um 
Uh, look, Julian, Jules, I mate. Yeah, Jules had a great race as well. Simon, in your blog, you spoke about running poles. What was your initial aversion to them and how do you feel now? Basically, so what we talked about before. But... Oh, right. Yeah. Um, like I said, I was never against them. I wasn't against them for, for like races like UTMB and stuff like we you know, we're, we're the proper hills. Yeah, and it's going to take you an hour or two to get them. So I, I was I, I was always a bit against using them in the UK because our hills are just not that big. But, yeah, I've changed my views now. Now we've got fast runners using them well in the UK. You know, yeah, I need to I need to join them or I'm just going to get dropped, essentially. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to start training with now when I, when I get running again. Quite exciting too, though I imagine, isn't it? Because it, like, if all goes well, it'll give you an extra string to the bow. Yeah, yeah. Like you say it's yeah. not like you've averted them; it's just that you've not been in races. And, and no, I, I've, I haven't been. I haven't done the big ones in Europe yet, so it's not been. I've used them for spine race, but that's because you got a ten kilogram bag on your back. So uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'll, I'll be considering them for other UK races now. Um, camp life, so. To give you an idea, like day six was quite uneventful. I finished in pain. Simon was uh, out on the hill. That was a, that was actually a good lift. I'd been dawdling around, but you're motivated to get to the finish to see your family. But yeah, Si had waited. I don't know when he was on the hill. I don't fucking we, 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 we waited for a while for you. Well, I, I wanted to, I wanted to see James go through. So then I yeah. was waiting for uh, so everyone come through then, and then uh, yeah. I was like, where the fuck is Gary? So <laughs> I'm checking the track all the time. And I'm like, Christ, this is a, this is a slow dot, this is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I couldn't, yeah. But you know what it's like running with that tendonitis. So it's just like, yeah, this, is, this, is my, this, is, this is my pace for the day. And actually, after I saw you, it did give me a, gave me a boost because then I actually finished Cardiff a lot quicker. I don't know yeah. why. It was just, stop, you, you didn't have to get out of that pity party because it's not like, you're in pain, but it's not getting any worse. It's just... It's just there then, isn't it? And, uh, just there, it. and you're just prolonging the misery if you just have walk breaks or whatever. So, yeah, it's pretty much ran all the way in. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, so that was that. Si was out finishing, meeting everyone. So, like, that was another good part. Like, so I did, like, people won't know, but, like, we, I finished. All it's, quite a few of his mates finished, had great races, but Si was still there at the finish to, to welcome the winners home and all that kind of stuff, so... No, no, it was great. It was great, yeah. No, I'm glad I went. You know, I could have just stayed in the house and sulked, but no, I'm glad I went to the end. Yeah, had a, a give me a bit of an uplift as well. So, uh, yeah. yeah, no, it was just great to see everybody finishing. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. It's not like, although you didn't finish, and we like we can all joke, but you've still done two point nine dragons back. So don't you? you missed one day <laughs> yeah. out of yeah. out of three dragons backs. Was it 66 66 percent success rate? Uh, no, we're doing days. Doing oh, right, right. okay. Like, right, make, make, make it sound better. Ninety something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. it's like yeah. I would like to get a third finish, but um, here we are. I, I I said I won't be back to dragons back, but I know I will. Just not next year. I'll uh, I'll be back again. Can't hear you, Gary. You're on mute, mate. Back, I can hear you now. My uh, headphones run out of battery, so uh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah. So, I imagine I thought that might be coming in future, maybe coming back. Yeah, yeah, I think I will be back. I mean, why don't well, we do I mean, it when you're like 60? The old men at the back, <laughs> like... uh, I know, yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely won't be doing an extra. There's, there's other things, isn't there, happening at the same time, so um. Do something else, but yeah. 
as we shall see. I won't keep you much longer, mate, but I wanted to talk about camp life as well. So, and if, anyone, uh, if anyone's got a question for Simon or me, uh, get it in the comments and I'll, I'll clear it up, but we're not going to keep him too much longer. Camp life is one of the bits that kind of, it got me through that week, really, because I like without, it wasn't horrendous, but I didn't have a fun first two days, enjoyed the second two, day five went pear-shaped, but everything that surrounded that was like the best time I've had in an event because like I obviously already knew you really well got to meet Sam Sam was great and it was Sam Skinner had an amazing race seeing him just dedication each day yeah. to hang on and like and again people won't know he, he he looked really sick one night didn't he and like we were like and he was yeah. having mad dreams he, he, he just, just he's, 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 every day he just keeps getting, he's going to keep getting better and better, Sam is as well. And he's got yeah. the drive and the ambition. And he t tells me, you know, he wants to get better and better and he, he's going to. Yeah. So, yeah. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to be a name to watch out for in the future. <laughs> and he when is. he come past and, and it was like, like he, he wouldn't say a word to me, like, but in a nice, in a good way, because he was in the zone yeah. and give him a tap on the bum or whatever, because it was, it was just good to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah, it was good. And then I got to run with him off Cadder that day because he's not he's not that great going downhill yet by his own admission. So I was managing to keep with him and Lisa so I could find that line off Cadder. And then as soon yeah. as I found it, it was like, right, you can go now. <laughs> and it was uh, yeah, it was just good to see. He was, he was so committed all week to see him get a good result. I was I was really happy. Like, yeah. But it yeah. also, going, like camp life, there was a good group of lads and even the ones that, weren't in there it was just such by but i always think by the time you get to four five and six well last time it's I, four and five everyone's in it together then you just, yeah so i'd say that the evening of day three that's yeah. where everybody knows each other and that's yeah. when the group the groups form and yeah then it's, it's a it's good times in the camp then and you're just yeah. always so excited to get back into the camp aren't you yeah yeah just to hear the stories, and it's not like no one's not from my point of view. No one was really moaning, even though they had rough days, and it was all positive. Yeah. And it was just really good to be around because everyone's in everyone's in the same boat. And then you just see people kind of deteriorate through the week, and it's and the conversations might get shorter, but it's still, yeah, it, it was it was really good. I remember like the day five evening when you almost know you can get to the finish kind of thing but then the camp's obliterated you're not there it's so weird like <laughs> not having someone sleep next to me which sounds like, <laughs> like uh, I had all that space and everything it was like and then even now I'm thinking I hope he's all right I hope he's okay but, uh, <laughs> trust me I, I was all right <laughs> I'm gonna go KFC, it's so KFC and ice cream you know because yeah. you're in that bubble it's like oh god I hope mm. he's all right it's just, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's the, the DBR bubble. It's, it's great, isn't it? I mean, even it's like this, you, you don't think of the world outside, do you? It's just, yeah. It's, and it's, even though like, we all know, like, the, the finish got changed and stuff like that, and, like, we didn't know anything about it. And like, I think we're probably the last people in the world to a point that would, would know anything about it. And then, yeah. Yeah, and I know everyone was kind of worried, but we, the organize, from the organisation point of view, it was so good because... It was just like, you are finishing, it's a different location finish, but you are finishing the race. That's all we needed to know, and that's all the info we needed, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, good. Jules got another question. Uh, having done Dragons Back this year, I'm tempted by Spine Summer for next year. Biggest difference or specific training you would feel benefit that's different to Dragons Back, he's saying. So, yeah. Uh, mm. Uh, so all well, spine races are non-stop, so that's the big difference there. You know, so you've got non-stop races, you've got stage races, so yeah, this is a non-stop. Um, you're gonna be you, on spine races. You could be out in between checkpoints for, for I don't know, twelve to twenty hours. So yeah, it's, it's more of an adventure race rather, you know, rather than a day out in on the dragon's back. Those, that's the big difference there, and you've got to manage yourself more. So you've got to you decide when to eat and things like that. You know, it's not like a dragon's back where you finish a race you eat. It's you need to make more decisions when you're on a, on a spine race, a non-stop race, um, things like that. Um, 
How much the train do you do with because it's a big kit list, big pack compared to yeah, yeah. most people use you. How much training would you do with the pack? Because like I've done the spine race, it's an, I, I always think it's a good question is like, is there a trade off because it's hard work kind of thing, or would you, do, where do you sit with that? Well, you you run slower because of, because of the pack, um, but yeah, no, I I do all of the training with the pack. There with the full with the full weight so all my hill reps and everything with the full pack yeah, yeah you, you need to get used to that weight um and yeah so yeah and yeah use poles as well so i've always used poles on spine races um because of the weight of the pack um yeah so just get out and practice with the poles and the pack um and then i yeah wreck wreck I never wrecked uh, any of the spine course, but in the nights, the nav can get a bit tricky in times. Um, but so, yeah, if you've got time to wreck it, I would. So it'll, it'll help you in the nights when you're, when you're running. Um, yeah. Good. Right. One of the last questions. What What's next? I mean, I kind of know, but... Is it just recovery focus, then spine focus? Yeah, um, I'm not going to do anything until my leg is better. So hopefully it'll be hopefully it'll be weeks, only yeah. a couple of weeks now. But yeah, then yeah, throwing all my eggs in the spine race basket for January, and uh, so that's, that's all I'm thinking of now. Um, we'll be going all in on it. Um, yeah, I've got some good experience on it, so I'm hoping to do uh, to do very well. But um, my lessons learned from this Dragon's Back race is the mindset, how much of a mess my mind was at the start. So hopefully I can take some lessons from that and maybe going spine races a bit more chilled, a bit more yeah. chilled, yeah. And um, maybe I can enjoy it from the off and get stuck into it. So um, I'm hoping I can sort that bit, sort that side out of it. Yeah, do that better. I think you'd be grand, mate. Yeah, it's not like... You didn't, you didn't you didn't get what you wanted from that dragon's back but you could you do still enough there to know that you you know what you can do and there's some changes you can make and if it's mindset wise then that's then that's all good isn't it you can do that yeah that's, that's something i've never really had the problem with mindset before so it was a, it was a first first time I've, that's come up with me so yeah i'm hoping i can just learn from it and uh yeah not 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 come up, up with that problem again Good, good, fantastic, mate. What about you, Gary? What are you <laughs> doing next? Uh, yeah, I've got the arc. I've got the arc one hundred. And um, originally, when you're in that pain and you've just finished Dragon's Back, I couldn't. Even though it's January, I was thinking, oh god, I can't cope with that. But I'm actually, I'm actually motivated a bit like you to just have a because the arc is down in Cornwall. I went on holiday there in the summer, and well, a couple of weeks before Dragon's Back, and it's so far away. It's going to be a one-soft thing probably for me. So I'll give it everything I can between when I pick up out of this injury until then. And then, uh, yeah, it'd be different for me because I t traditionally, over the last five years, I would have a summer race, maybe race a little bit going into winter. But then I do, I try and do, say, like a marathon block, whether I run a marathon or not. I don't particularly, I've not enjoyed a longer race in December, January before. Um so yeah, it's kind of new for me. I've having to just look at training a bit differently, manage stuff like that a bit differently, and that's what's a bit exciting, really. And it's the arc, so I'm only running the arc because I see it grow each year, and people that yeah. tell me stories about it, and it's one of those ones that I yeah, want to it's, 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 got, it's got its name for itself now, hasn't it? It's, a, it, it's yeah. a popular UK race now. It's, it's up there. Well, Sam's doing it, so I'll get to... Uh, smell his parts again hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so I'd watch out for Sam on the arc he's gonna do good he is uh... yeah he will do good yeah mm. he, yeah um hopefully I'll catch up with him at some time before and I'll at least speak to him because yeah I want him to do really well there yeah yeah, yeah definitely um okay mate yeah that's it cool what I'll do is if anyone's got a question I'm sure you can contact Sai uh, I suppose we should mention if you are doing Dragons Back next year, we're we're teaming together for some coaching for people. 
I'll leave that in the comments. That's not really what this was about, but people have been asking. So yeah, it's going to be like a group training for anyone that wants to jump on that from January. Send us a message. Uh, 4.9 times finishes previous. <laughs> <laughs> previous winner. Uh, He's going to go back. I probably won't. I'll stick to helping people through it for a good while. But yeah, never, never say never. Um, yeah, that's all we've got. So thank you for watching, really. And what I'll do is uh, I'm going to do some more of these. So I might try and get uh, Sai to join me again and we can see how his um, spine training is going. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm up for that. Good stuff. Yeah, didn't warn you about that, but I'm sure you'll be all right. <laughs> 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 yeah thanks for your questions everyone sorry it took so long to get get us going i had a major malfunction my end um, <laughs> yeah, yeah we got there in the end as always yeah. and this will sit on youtube now so you can watch it back ask something in the comments after and i'll get back to you or so i'll get back to you and uh yeah enjoy your running everyone so here's all thank you very much nice one